<laughs> well, hello again from Kingston. It's uh, time to look at the third crossing again. Not a bad day today and temperatures are reasonable. Not been the case all the time this, uh, this particular period. Let's look at the third crossing. Don't forget, if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more of them, please consider subscribing and at least click the thumbs up. Thank you. It has been another very busy period at the third crossing. Several strands continue to be woven together expertly. But I thought I'd open this update with a look back just a year ago at the situation on the crossing. Hard to believe that so much has been achieved in a comparatively short period, over a winter too. Getting back to the present, the preparation of the utilities at the junction of Highway 15 and Gore Road continues, with workers present this week. This is where the roadway leading off the new bridge will meet the existing road network. Moving closer to the bridge, locally contracted trucks have been delivering large amounts of gravel and hardcore to build up the area that will run uphill to meet Highway 15. This has kept a bulldozer and excavator busy recently. It's known that some of this work is already aimed at providing the grade that will lead bridge traffic up the hill to Highway 15. The same dozer, very expertly operated, has also been assisting in work closer to the bridge the issue has been preparation of an area that had to be built up, stabilised and compacted to provide a base for the crane that will move this way to lift into place the sections of the bridge that make landfall on the east abutment. Speaking of the steel arched bridge, iron workers of locals 721 and 765 employed by Walters Group continue to impress. The speed and skill they demonstrate in assembling enormous steel sections constantly impresses. As the structure grows to almost half its final size, it swarms with workers finalising joints and installing components. It remains amazing how incredibly well the pieces fit, including all the ancillary pieces that support and reinforce the major components. An examination of the structure reveals a multitude of cross braces and struts. All of them contribute to the strength of the bridge, but they all require meticulous attention to secure them. The dedication and skill of all of the iron workers involved is constantly impressive, but their work would stop if steel deliveries failed. Empire Transportation has continued to ensure a steady flow of steel from the Walters Group facility in Hamilton. There are often several massive beams on site awaiting placement. Large quantities of ancillary steel can be seen too. Placement is a precision task. On at least one occasion in recent days, High winds caused installation to be postponed, something that must drive the detail-oriented planners absolutely mad. They strive constantly for efficiency. One sign of the constant planning and preparation for each move is survey work. A number of control stations now dot the shorelines, and frequent checks are made to ensure the accuracy of each new phase of work. Wind hasn't been the only environmental factor to complicate work on the project. Frustratingly, Driving snow returned to the site last week, reducing visibility and making work on the high steel potentially risky. The question of pressing on is never placed ahead of workforce safety and work on the steel structure was halted. It was possible though, despite the conditions, to place two more concrete girders on the west end. Work on placing the girders seems almost impossible to stop. To date, so far as I know, only one very windy day has interrupted the work of extending the bridge out from the western shore. On another occasion in this period, everyone was surprised to wake up to heavy fog, which lifted gradually from the site as the morning wore on. But the foghorn on the Wolf Island ferry could be heard for most of the morning. Just before the deadline for this update came, two more girders were installed to complete the concrete sections out to Pier 9 of 17. That takes the concrete part of the bridge halfway towards the point at which it will join the steel arched bridge assembly. There's no question though that the eye is caught by the steady growth of the arched steel bridge sections. I don't think we've shown the full detail of the installation of a major steel section yet, so let's do that now. Although the steel beams are delivered by Empire Transportation Vehicles, it's a dedicated prime mover belonging to Walters Group that moves them onto the causeway. 
They're generally driven on facing the direction in which they will be installed. Close attention is paid to ensuring the accurate placement of the crane, the tractor trailer rig and the lifts that will serve and support iron workers securing the beam once it is placed. Clearly, the steel sections arrive and are transported flat. So the first task, using both blocks on the crane, is to lift them clear of the trailer. Workers stand back for safety but man control lines. Once the beam is clear of its trailer, the tractor returns and moves it from under the beam. Once it's confirmed that the area is clear and in radio communication with guides, the crane operator skillfully lifts the beam to the vertical. The lower lines are removed and the associated crane block raised clear. Then, and only then with every possible precaution taken, the beam is carefully raised. It takes a very experienced operator to orchestrate the lift. He or she has to swing the steel piece around and move it laterally to place the beam precisely where it should be. In this case, note the need to move around and beside the pillar of the lift bridge. Finally, the beam's position is confirmed to be correct and iron workers lock it into place. This process has now been executed about 20 times with unerring precision. Although the inclination is to focus on the concrete girders and the steel beams of the main arches, there's always a lot of other activity on site. Concrete has been delivered to form the west abutment close to Montreal Street and it's curing now under the familiar red cladding. At the east end, a lot of work has gone into preparing Pier 18 the westernmost of the two major permanent bridge supports to accept the steel bridge sections. Steel framing has been removed, leaving a clean concrete finish. Steel cages have been lowered into pre-drilled holes, and these are topped by girder rests that will actually bear the load of the steel sections of the arch. With a similar purpose, steel bonnets, or caps, were placed on top of the piles that provide temporary support. In one instance, this required that the temporary steel crossbeam be removed, the caps installed and then replaced. The eye is always drawn to the work of the largest cranes, the Liebherr LR1300s, but the telescopic cranes on site are also very busy. They are easier to move and play a critical role in loading struts and braces onto the trailers that deliver them to the causeway, then lifting them into place. Whenever any heavy equipment is underway, ground guides keep a wary out for danger to the equipment or to members of the workforce. Interestingly, it was revealed last week that workers on site have tags inside their helmets that warn the drivers of heavy equipment if they are nearby, almost completely reducing the risk of individuals being run over or crushed during operations. It's unclear exactly what was involved but a large suction equipment was recently engaged in work on the margins of the East End construction area. As we close this update, we can only hope that as we enter the month of May, the weather will turn permanently to warmer and more pleasant conditions. If you are finding these updates helpful in understanding work on our third crossing, please consider subscribing to the channel. Stay safe, stay well. Well, there we go. That's another update complete. And uh, because things are getting pretty busy here, as you've probably noticed, we'll be uh, producing another update on uh, May the 9th, Mother's Day. Nice surprise for Mum. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and please pop a like or a comment below. Take care.